at the Nigerian Professional Football League was halted in March due to the spread of COVID-19. And now clubs have voted unanimously to end the 2019-2020 season. Now remember the French League, that's how they league on. The Scottish Premiership and Belgian Pro League were also halted due to COVID-19. Now Plutu United finished top of the standings based on points per game as a PPG. Now the Joss Club along with Enyimba will represent Nigeria in the CAF Champions League while Rivers United will feature in the CAF Confederation Cup. Aquire United and Lobby Stars abstained from the voting process while Inugu Rangers voted for the second option of playoffs. Uh, we have Andrew Randa, the media officer to the Nigerian the 20 national team, talking about the Flying Eagles, standing by to speak with us this morning on this issue. Uh, good morning, Andrew. Hey, Doka, how are you doing? Uh, very well. Um, how is it going? Uh, not bad, but um, how's, and how's all the issues oh. in the NPFL? Nice. Now, there's a whole lot I've heard about the Nigeria Professional Football League on the cancellation, and some clubs seem to, seem to be protesting uh, this uh, decision. Uh, can you quickly, quickly put us up to speed? Um, yes. Like you, had, like you rightly said, uh, there was a release on us um, stating that you know, them have voted the, uh, using the PP system. Uh, two of the other teams uh, refused to vote. Our Rangers I uh, decided to go for the So Lobby Stars and Apa decided to abstain, while Rangers International, the 20th team, decided to go for the six. Now that has also won the whole lot of uh, press releases going back and forth. Mm. And those that are pro and said, uh, you know, some unsafe was being used against each other, uh, which was really, really bad. And today, uh, the NFL, the LNC, and the club chairman also said to have a meeting to either ratify the decision by the club chairman or uh, to be option. But that being said, uh, I think every time in our lives, uh, COVID-19 and everything that's been happening, I really do think that we don't have the capacity, logistics, or financial to conclude the league. Even a super it will be extremely difficult because every day uh, NCDC brings out uh, figures that are spiking. Um, so it's going to be very, very difficult. Don't forget. There's the interstate lockdown, so I do not know if clubs will be given waivers to travel around the country. And then you have to think of administrators, you have to think of journalists that are going to go for the games. So the logistics is extremely dire, and I do not see this happening. Now, do you support the fact that the league should be cancelled? And why are these other clubs complaining? Because I know this happened some seasons back where Lubistas were pronounced champions of the MPFL. And obviously, uh, Udoka, it's, it's, it's very strange. Let me tell you this. Uh, just backtrack a little bit to 20, uh, 2018 yeah. when we came back from the World Cup and you know, there was a whole lot that happened at that point uh, between the Giwa faction and the Madrid faction. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, we couldn't conclude the league. And it was said that, you know, we should just call up the league uh, so, you know, teams can go to prepare. Because at that point, CAP already given us a deadline to submit our digital representatives. Mm -hmm. So, lobbyists who were at top of the league at that point, after 24 match games, were given the ticket to go and represent Nigeria. They were not crown champion. This is the third time I'm going to say this on national or intercontinental TV. Lobby stars were not crown champion, and they were given the ticket to go and represent Nigeria. And now, at that point, for lobby stars, it was open for them because it favored them. Now, fast forward two years later, because of the whole semantics related to the PPG, it does not favor them. And all of a sudden, they have a problem. And the peculiarity about this uh, season is the fact that Ayimba had five outstanding matches because, of yeah. course, there were two that went for this in the Cup Confederations Cup in Nigeria, and then Rangers had a game. Now, the points per game uh, coefficient gives everybody a level playing field. You are being judged squarely based on what you play in the pitch of play. So, for example, Plateau United will go for 29 points after 25 match games. So, the coefficient will be 49 over 25, which will give them their final PP standings. I think that is very fair, Udoka. Now, if you play five matches and you have 10 points, that is also going to be divided. You know, so it's, it's the fair. Even when we're in school, they normally use a class average for us. And then they get whatever it is they want to get. So if you ask me, Udoka, I will tell you the PPG is the fairest way to go so that everybody will be captured. Whether you're Adamao United, your lobby stars, or your Rangers. The only snag, and that is the part I think you should be looking at, is the relegation. Yeah. If we get to a certain point that teams will not be relegated, it literally means every other lower cadre is going to be affected. 
But at the end of the day, we have to look at the greater good of the sport in Nigeria. We should, first of all, keep aside personal interest and make sure that these things work. Uh, Mike Udoko, my, my elder, was, was on another TV station saying that the PPG should be taken back to March day 13. That cannot happen. Everything you've done on the pitch of play, as of when the league was called off, is what you are supposed to be judged on. And even at that match day 13, a few other things had uh, outstanding things. So how are you going to judge that? It's going to be extremely difficult, Doc. The first way and the barest minimum is PPG. You are going to be judged squarely, and I say squarely, based on what you put down on the pitch of play, home and away. Now, for Luby Stars, I think they shouldn't just complain uh, about what's going on at the moment. And it, it's just obvious that no champion has been, um, no, no club has been awarded the champion of the NPFL. It's just that they're going to be representing uh, Nigeria when it comes to the CAF Competitions Cup and the Champions League. But the relegation zone is a major challenge at the moment. And I do not know what the LMC is doing about this, but what would be your advice? Um, if I was the LMC chairman, obviously I'm not. Um, I will say this season there will be no relegation, there will be no, uh, you know, there will be no tattoo winners per se. And this is why I say this to Doc. If you look at the NNL, the NNL has not even started. We yeah. can keep that aside. The NNL has played, uh, the highest team has played just five matches. I remember they are divided into two groups. So you basically cannot promote teams after five matches. If they have gone probably halfway across, and then you'll be able to get them. Remember, also in weekly training means they may have to do a playoff more or less. Or they will say the uh, first four in each of the groups will go forward. But they've not even played half of the matches. There are some teams that play just two matches, some three matches. So how do you deduce uh, champions that will go to the NPL after some teams have just played two matches? If you have played to a certain extent, say maybe uh, three quarters of the games, then probably they might also use a PPG to be able to get teams that are going to send to the NPFL. But that has not happened. If few teams have played two or three matches, it's not fair for you to be able to say, we're going to promote you and all that. If uh, they are able to do uh, maybe, like I said, half of the matches or three quarters of the matches, then to a certain extent, we can say it's a bit fair for them to also use the PPG or the WPPG and then promote teams to the NPFL. But don't forget, the NPFL is the APS leagues. Unfortunately, most of the times, they decide what happens in the lower leagues. So if the NPFL say, listen, because of everything that's happened, we're going to draw out force majeure, we're going to say uh, no relegation, it literally means that all others have to go and start from scratch. I don't know what the WNPL are going to be, that's immensely, but I do know the NLO have not even started, so that's by the way. Then the NLO will also have to put their house in order and say, listen, we don't have a tattoo sponsor, there's a reason why we stopped the league before Christmas, we need to go and sort that particular issue out and then start the league proper and then go in the same line that the MPFL has gone. Now, if everybody decides to come on board and follow this as it's supposed to be, yeah. by next season, everything should go back to normal. So I think the NNL should basically put their house in order, get a tattoo sponsor, restart their league in the normal way, and then the NNL will also start, the other cadres will also start, and then the NWPL will also start. Unfortunately, again, the doctor, the actual cup, from all indications, will not happen. So another instance that a lot of people are not looking at is who are going to represent Nigeria as the fourth in the CAF um, Confederations Cup if the actual cup will not be played. Mm -hmm. Will it be another NPFL team, or will they decide to keep that slot an NNL team? Remember last season we had Carlos Tudas and Nigeria Tornadoes play the final four plus one. How are they going to do that? That's another area that a lot of us are talking about. Wow, a whole lot talking about the Nigerian professional football. But we just hope that uh, we get our house in order and I look forward to next season. And, uh, of course, I uh, have a proper free-flowing uh, league system. But then, thank you very much, Andrew, for speaking with us today. Thank you, Doc. It's always a pleasure. All right. Do enjoy the rest of your day.